Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in this video what I want to do is just show you the difference between using Redux versus the use reducer hook in React uh, when it comes to managing global state or application wide state but the basic concept is this as your app gets bigger and bigger having your state located in individual components can get kind of confusing and what happens is that you start having state that really needs to kind of be in completely different parts of the component tree. So then you end up doing all this sort of weird machinations of moving state up. So then you have state that has nothing to do with your app component and your app component so that way you can pass it down to different parts. Um, and you're passing down all sorts of functions to transfer data up and down the component tree. And it gets a bit complicated. So for larger applications, it may make more sense to take all of your state, all of your data, well, not all of it, but the data that tends to be used throughout. So if it's data that only belongs in one component, you keep it in that component. But if it's data that might be used in five or, five or six components across your component tree, then that data may be best living in your store. Okay, and your store is just where you store data. Okay, and so you have a Redux store, um, use reducer they don't really have like a particular name for it, but it's the same idea they both pretty much work the same way so originally it was just Redux okay Redux was this third-party library that allowed now among others I think there's also like MobX um, and a few others that allow you to have global state but Redux was sort of the clear winner and then when they came out with react hooks they came out with sort of a mini version of Redux built into react called the use reducer hook so, and generally the, the hard part of these is a setup. Once it's set up, working with these is pretty straightforward. So in that, I've actually created templates so that way you don't have to worry about the setup. So I'll create a new terminal. And we'll show you how this works. So let's say we want to do a Redux template. The command would be mpx merced spinup react reducer. That's my react with Redux templates, a react Redux. And then we'll just call this practice Redux. And then that should be the folder that it creates. So then it creates the thing, and there it is, practice Redux. Okay, then I would CD into that folder. Do an npm install to install the libraries. So I'll let that install. But while it does that, let's, oh, well, that was pretty quick. Oh, nope, not quite done yet. We go to the source and um, Here's this folder where we have all the, the, the Redux set of files. Okay, so let's walk through them. And it looks like a lot, but it really isn't. Okay, so actions. Okay, actions are basically, really what, what an action is, is that it returns, well, actually, no, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. First, let's get to the store. Okay, so here what we're doing is we're just initializing a Redux store. So this create store function from the Redux library creates the store. And essentially what we're doing is we're passing the store our reducer. A reducer is a function that determines how you're going to update your state. Okay, so this creates the store. Now what happens in the reducer function, so this is what the reducer is, it's just a big function, and the idea is that whatever the return value of this function is, is the new state. So the typical pattern is, is that you have a switch statement, and that switch statement will determine sort of what thing happens. Okay, so basically all your updates of state, all your logic for updating your state is in this one switch. So in this case, I have one situation where I'm adding, another situation where I'm subtracting. But because it, whatever the result of this function replaces that store like it updates the store you always want to make sure you do this whole spread operator with the state because you want to include the existing data store plus any changes so that's all that is again so the, the reducer is just a function whose whatever and it doesn't have to be a switch statement it could be in this statement you could do whatever you want um, in this function but the bottom line is whatever the return value is is the new value of the store the initial, this is just the initial value of the store. Action types. This is, okay, so basically the way it works when you use the store, so let me, I think it's an example here. 
So if I go to index.jsx, yeah, so here we have the initial use of the reducer. Okay, so this is my app component here. Okay, so what I do is I import the provider because the way that the Redux store is provided to your application is through you, the contacts. So again, React has this feature called contacts that allows you to provide information to your entire. So essentially what happens is that this provider gets wrapped around your components. So you see here, React DOM, and there's the provider. And then there's the app component. Okay, nice. Okay, and that provider provides a store. Okay, so then there's the store. Okay, and again, we are bringing the store from our Redux store file, because again, if we go back to store, we created the store and exported it. So that created the store. Okay. Cool. Now, this use selector hook is to grab data from the store. So if any component you want to actually like use data from the store, you're going to use this use selector hook. And essentially what happens is that in the use selector hook, you have a callback. And then in the callback, you return whatever data you want to grab. Okay, so basically this function returns whatever this function returns. Okay, so the store gets passed into this callback you return what you want to get from it, and then it gets stored in this variable. So I'm just storing stored the count variable from the store. Cool. Now dispatch, the use dispatch hook allows you to get the dispatch function. This is how we update our state. So we use the use dispatch hook. It gives us our dispatch function. So we save that in a variable called dispatch. And then anytime we want to update our state, we just pass in the function. So here what we're doing, is we're passing in, and this is where the actions come in. What you do is you have to pass in what's called a payload, uh, an action. And the typical pattern is that the action is an object with a couple different properties. But here we're just saying add. Okay, and we created these action types over here in action types. Okay. So all we're doing is saying here is that whenever we use the add function, it's going to return our action object for us. So instead of us having to like type out this whole object, we create these functions and basically, and again, you don't have to do all this. All that matters is you pass something to dispatch and then whatever gets past the dispatch. So essentially what the pattern goes, whenever you use dispatch, whatever you pass into dispatch gets passed into your reducer. Okay. As the action. So it could be an object, could be an array. Again, you design how you want your reducer to work, but the typical pattern is that the action has two properties, type, which tells you what type, and that's what the switch is based on, and then a payload, which is any other data that's needed to update the state. So in this case, and again, what you do is you, you predefine that, so that way you, know, you don't have to be typing an object all the time. You define these functions, so the type is already kind of set. So every time you do the object, this function will already return an object with the type set to go. And then, you know, all you have to do is pass in the payload into the function. So that's what's happening here in index.html, I mean, index.jsx. I'm using this add function, passing the return value of that to dispatch. The return value of that is this. And then this variable here, this is just to avoid mistyping the type. So what you do is you just create variables constants and again this is not something you have to do either because all that really matters is that the string is add that's passed in as the type but you create these variables so that way you don't accidentally mistype the variable um, I always found this to be redundant I'm not quite sure you don't really again you don't have to do this, this is just a typical sort of redux pattern um, and yeah that's pretty much how that works I'm just trying to remember how does the initial state get passed in? Um, so module that exports. Yeah, that's fine. So where did we bring in the initial? Here it is. Initial store require. Ah, I see. Okay. Uh, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. 
But I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, so then going forward, so it really is a setup. Like doing all this setup is what takes a long time. But once you have it set up, like in this template, it's not too bad. You just go in there and you just switch up the actions for your application. And again, you can use the types if you want. I mean, you could as easily just type in the string of add here and it would work just the same. Um, but yeah, all that basic stuff is set up here. So all you would really be doing is just changing the reducer and the action and action types. And then again, you just use dispatch wherever you want to update the state and you just pass in. So you would just import. And then again, I import the action that I plan on using. So since I plan on using add and subtract actions in this particular, I imported those functions from actions. So that way I can pass those to dispatch. And again, that passes the correct object to dispatch for the reducer to do the thing I wanted to do. But the thing is like, notice like all that logic for adding and subtracting is no longer in this component. No longer is that state only exist here. So if I use dispatch to update the state, it still exists and I can pull it in in other components uh, using that. So that's how Redux works. I think you'll find that the use reducer workflow is a little bit simpler. Okay, so let's just try that out. So let's go back to the main folder uh, and let's make another project. MPX, uh, Merced spin up, that's the tool. And then we're gonna use the React reducer template. And, and again, you can go read the documentation for the list of all the templates. React reducer, and um, we're gonna call this practice reducer. Hmm, you didn't like that. I did. Oh, I did NPM, that's why. NPX. There we go. Okay, so let's see here, that's all set up now. So I'm gonna CD into that folder, CD into React, or practice React reducer, so practice reducer. And then we're going to do And then what I'm gonna do is do an npm install. And then let's take a look at the files. So here we got the source. Uh, nope, that's the wrong bus, re the Redux one. Let's go here, source. And then here, app state is where I put all the use reducer logic. Again, I just call it app state. It's not, it's not really a convention or anything. Um, but it's the same, see, it's like the same setup. Okay, we have the initial state, so it's the initial value of the state. Again, the index is just there to export everything into from one place. See, this just organizes it better, so that way you're not importing it from a bunch of different files. Um, app reducer. This is the reducer function. This works just like the reducer function in Redux. So as you see, like the setup is pretty much the same. This is the context that we're going to use to deliver the reducer throughout. And then here are our actions. So again, same functions, except I didn't bother making the constants because I just found that redundant. So here I just used the raw strings, but it's the same pattern. Okay. So then in this case, once again, all I would do is we wrap, again, we have the context provider. We wrap our app in that. And then we're passing, except here, the way it works is that you don't have this, like, s just the store. Um, you're going to pass the state and dispatch via the context provider. So basically, you'll always get both of those via the use context hook, instead of having, like, a separate hook to get that those individually. So then what happens is here, I create the state so this is what this is i'm using the use reducer hook to create that state and then that state will always update via the dispatch function which works just like the dispatch function worked before so let's see here where did i use it we use it in count so let's go to components counter and you see here i import the types and the context um and then here i just say okay i'm going to use and then type i made it one big object you know we're importing it as one big 
object with all the different types just so that way you don't have to type in you could destructure the individual parts of type I guess um, but yeah basically and then here I grab the state and dispatch from the context using the use context hook and then yeah I just do the same thing so dispatch and then I pass in the type and then it does the thing and then that's pretty much how they work so they're pretty much they work the same way the only difference is that Redux does have some extra bells and whistles for more complicated reducers where you can actually have like multiple reducers you can have multiple reducers with use reducer but like Redux has things where you can combine them and do some other extra fancy things with them but overall like I would say for 90% of 90% of the time that I find myself using it for personal projects use reducers built into react the setups a little bit quicker um, and even then I've actually moved to this moved away from using uh, this reducer pattern into a separate pattern that I've created called the task runner pattern where I instead of having a reducer function I have a task object an object of several different functions they get past um, a set state and state function but that's a conversation for another day um, but yeah that's 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 the difference between using uh, a little tutorial on using Redux and using use reducer uh, my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com have a great day and enjoy